We have a few review problems here looking at area under curves and the definite integral approximating that. The first problem says set up and evaluate the limit of the Riemann sum that uses right hand endpoints to evaluate the actual area under the curve f of x equals x squared minus 1 on the interval from 1 to 3. Okay, so the first thing that I notice here is I know what my curve is. My curve, notice at 0, the intercept is negative 1, so it's going to be cupped up like that. At 1, the height happens to be 0. At 3, if you plugged in 3, the height would be 8. We're trying to approximate that area. It doesn't tell us how many rectangles to use, so we actually get to pick. Often problems will say something like n equals 4. I like 4. 4 seems moderate. Uh, if you were going to break this into 4 rectangles, they would have width 1 half. How do I conclude that? Well, the change in x, so moving from one rectangle to the next, is right end minus left end over the number of rectangles. In our case, that's 3 minus 1 over 4, or 1 half, or 0.5, right? So the width of our rectangles would be 0.5. I'm supposed to use the right-hand side to evaluate the height. So the right-hand side of this is 1.5. I'll draw that over to indicate I'll use that for the height of my rectangle. The width is 0.5. That rectangle, if I was going to write it out, would be height f of 1.5 times 0.5. That's the width. Second rectangle, I'm going to evaluate the height at 2. So how high is the function at 2? That's called f of 2 times the width, 0.5. So this is the area of the first rectangle plus the area of the second rectangle plus the area of the third rectangle, notice that's height evaluated at 2.5, so f of 2.5 times 0.5 plus the last rectangle, hmm, that's height at 3 times 0.5. Now I need to evaluate that, so I need to plug all of those things into my function. I also have four multiplications to do. Now, uh, if I use a little common sense, I can use distributive property, factor out that 0.5, and I'll only have to do one multiplication, and I'll just add these values in here. So let's see what I can do. If I plugged in 1.5, 1.5 squared is 2.25, minus 1 is 1.25, 2 squared is 4, minus 1 is 3, 2.5 squared is 6.25 minus 1 is 5.25. 3 squared is 9 minus 1 is 8. If I added, I'll add the two decimals together first. 1.25 plus 5.25 is 6.5. That would make 9.5, 17 17.5. So this is the setup that it asks for. I'm now evaluating that times 0.5. Let's see. I know that 18, half of 18 is 9. This is a half short, so that means I'm a quarter short of 9, or 8.75. So the area is just less than 9. Notice that this is a high estimate. So I'm estimating using those rectangles. That's a high estimate. On uh, 4... B, I will get back to uh, this same problem and we'll see what I can do with it. Now, part problem 4A says find the area under the curve of f of x equals 2x minus 1. So we got a little bit simpler problem here by interpreting the integral geometrically. Okay, so that's fairly nice. That is... Uh, the intercept is negative 1, the slope is 2. I'm going from 1 to 3. Now, that's fairly convenient. Actually, 1, if 
I plug 1 into the function, the height is 1. So 1, 1 is this point. And notice that if I plug 3 into the function, that's going to be 5. So if I was going to geometrically dice up this piece, I've got a rectangle. It's a 2 by 1 rectangle, since this width is 2. Now this piece is 4, so I've got a 2 by 4 triangle, so plus 1 half base times height. That's 2 times 2 plus 4, area 6. Now they're going to ask me to use the, the fundamental theorem of calculus to find the area under this curve. I could actually find the exact area here. I'd get exactly 6. But I'm going to go ahead and go back to this problem, and I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. How do I do that? I say, well, the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared minus 1 dx is equal to the, or an, antiderivative of x squared minus 1. That's 1 third x to the third minus x, evaluated at 3, minus the same thing evaluated at 1. Let's see what happens. If I evaluate this thing at 3, I get 3 times 3 times 3 over 3. That's 9. 1, 3 cancels. The other two are left over. Minus 3. That's evaluating the function at, uh, at 3. Then I need to evaluate the whole function at 1. So 1 third times 1 times 1 times 1 gives me 1 third minus 1. I'm going to subtract that evaluation. Let's see. So I get this minus that is 6 minus negative 1 gives me 7 minus a third. So you could say that's 6 and 2 thirds if you wanted to because it's a third less than 7. Okay, on the next problem it says, well, I'm supposed to take this integral, the area under this curve, and I'm supposed to evaluate the rate of change of that piece. So how do I do that? Well, if this up here were just a u, I'd know how to evaluate d du. I would just substitute in a u into these pieces. So I'll go ahead and do that, uh, bearing in mind that my u value is cosine of x. But then, of course, there isn't just a u up there. I'm taking the derivative in terms of x, so then I need to use the chain rule. What's the derivative of this piece in terms of x? Negative sine x. So a little bit of chain rule action using that first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. OK, last but not least, I have what happens if I don't know what f of x is, but I know that the area, signed area, between a and b of f of x is negative 2. So you might think, well, if there's a and there's b, I've got some hypothetical f of x. How could the signed area be negative 2? Well, maybe f of x is something like this. And so that area under there is negative 2, if this function is f of x. Uh, well, but a to C, let's say, hmm, how could I do this? A to C, maybe C is over here. The area, if you took all of this signed area, all of that area together is 5. So that's the picture I have. That area is 5 from A to C. Well, what's the area from B? to a. Hmm, well if I started here and went back that direction, just geometrically notice my delta x's would be negative. So it would be negative this quantity here. Uh, as far as the algebra, integral from b to a is negative the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So that's negative, negative 2, or 2. Well, what about the integral from b to c? So if I went from here to here, geometrically, what would that be? Well, from b to c, it needs to be something so that this negative 2 signed area 
plus this gets me to 5. That means really I'm going to need 7, right? So 7 plus negative 2 will get me to 5. But how could I, how could I solve for that here? Well, I could say, hmm, how do I get from B to C? Uh, well, that's the integral from B to A of f of x dx plus the integral from a to c of f of x dx. Well, and I actually know what this is. This piece is what I just got there. That's 2. This piece is what I got there. That's 5. So that whole mess is 7. Woohoo! Okay, last but not least, if I took the integral under this curve from a to a, wait a second, what's the width there? 0. So if you're taking an area and the width is 0, it's all 0. Isn't that grand?